I would like to measure the rise time using the, the step response um, with a function generator and an oscilloscope. Now, of course, there isn't just a step response, it's more of a pulse, so you go up and down, and we can see that the yellow channel is a step and that the green channel is the output, and we can see that exponential approach. Now, the oscilloscope doesn't have a five tau measurement. It has a rise and a fall time. And so what you would do is, and the sum scopes are different, but they all have like a measurement button that you would select, right? And then you can see there's a source and then what to measure. So I want source two, but what I want to measure is in fact, the rise time which I select with this button okay and there's rise time and then I would press measure and now you can see that it's like 33.5 nanoseconds now sometimes you can get um, this waveform is a little blurry and sometimes you need to average out the noise a little bit so if you go and press acquire and then use that same selection button, we can use averaging to filter out the noise. Press quick measure again, and we can see our statistics here. Well, since we've been kind of moving around a bit, you would press statistics, reset statistics, and now we're getting um, A rise time mean of 34.4 microseconds. Now, if I multiply that um, by 0.455, I actually get tau. Right now, previously I was measuring 35 microseconds. Um, now I'm getting something a little bit different. Um, but also, before I move on, I want to show you some of the pitfalls of this measurement. That if you make the period too, too short, you'll still see a rise time. But notice that it's turning into a triangle wave and that the current rise time is 21 microseconds, but it's not really rising and falling 100%. So you want to make sure that there's enough time for it to um, stabilize. All right. And so actually you go for a lot longer than 5 tau, maybe 7 or even 8 tau for the rise time measurement to work. Now just before we move on, I want to reset the statistics. And I'm getting 30, a mean of 35 microseconds. So if I multiply that by 0.455 and divide that, uh, take the inverse and divide that by 2 pi, I get 999 hertz. So now let's find the 3 dB point with a sine wave. So off camera here, I'm setting the frequency to 9999 hertz. Alright, and I'm setting it to a sine wave. Now I don't want to measure um, the rise time anymore. All right. The thing I want to do is measure the ratio. Now on some oscilloscopes they don't have ratio. They just have peak to peak. If you don't have ratio you have to measure the, the peak to peak of the input and you divide that to the peak to peak of the output. And then you gotta multiply that, uh, the log of that times 20 to get it in dB. All right, so all I do is measure ratio and I'm getting three dB. Now also we can measure phase. So I'm just gonna go back here and measure phase. And um, 
I'm getting 3 dB and minus 45, which I have to tell you, like hardly ever happens. I just calibrated my probes and um, I've never actually gotten it this close. So there, there is uh, some tolerance, right? So my tau that I would extract from this measurement matches the tau that I would take from the step response 100% which I have to say is a bit, um, it's suspicious, but you know, anything is possible, even like a perfect data point. But the phase and the magnitude being, if the phase being like minus 43 at a gain of dB, that's acceptable.